Engage. Disrupt. Adapt. Repeat. You're listening to Pure Reinvention, the podcast for curious people. Misty, this is probably one of the best interviews we've ever had. I think so. I've said it before about another guest, but for I would really love to sit down and have a drink with Donna and talk to her for hours. Donna has such an interesting perspective, not only as a key leader within the city of Detroit, but she just loves what's happening within the city, and her passion just comes through as you listen to her speak. And I think she's a, just a wealth of knowledge, not just about Detroit, but about how we can, as leaders and as people, move projects and visions forward. As you listen to the conversation that's about to unfold, keep, keep track of some real bullet points that Donna makes because she makes so many that it's incredible to think about how you can really parallel some of those very same bullet points within your own association and within your own experience. And we'll come back after the interview and, and tell share our thoughts with you. Welcome to this edition of Pure Reinvention. We're here today with Donna Inch, who's the chairman and CEO of Ford Land. Ford Land uh, has a very global perspective as a leader, and we want to welcome Donna to the program. Welcome, Donna. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Donna is also the chairman of the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, and as such has some very interesting perspectives on some of the questions that we want to ask her this morning. Obviously, Donna, as Detroit is going through reinvention, and you've seen numerous uh, companies, both global and local, uh, who are also needing to uh, reinvent themselves in some fashion to be appropriate to the marketplace going forward. You've seen many parallels that have been going on in the city of Detroit and lessons learned that businesses can start to learn from. Can you share some of your thoughts on some of those parallel uh, uh, experiences you've right. seen? Sure. And uh, being part of the auto industry, as I am, uh, as part of Ford Motor Company, we know all about uh, reinventing ourselves and having to uh, pull yourselves up by your bootstraps and figure out the fundamentals of your business, the fundamentals of your customers, and put successful strategies in place. Well, the city of Detroit has been doing the same thing. And for many of us who have lived in this area most of our adult lives, uh, it was very disappointing to see where the city had gone in terms of uh, decline. But I'm telling you, the energy we have in the Detroit metro area right now is, is something that I haven't seen in my lifetime. And it parallels what companies have to go through in order to go back to the basics, get the fundamentals right, whether it be the city infrastructure, uh, the security situation, all of those fundamentals, and then build. And people with vision have come into the city and have started to really build things that are just phenomenal in terms of uh, what the city will have have to offer visitors as well as people that live there and and, uh, and and work there. So it's so exciting. And we're very anxious to have people come from other places around the country and see what's going on. Because I don't know that we always get uh, very positive press out there nationally. And it's frustrating to us because when you're here and you see what's happening, it's just so exciting and, and energetic. It's great for businesses to see how something as big as the city of Detroit, a big business, is finding its way back, and it's phenomenal. Donna, can you share with me a little bit of how you've seen the parallels, even at Ford Motor Company, and the, and the role especially of key leaders? Uh, yeah. From somebody from the outside looking in, it would, it's been very impressive to me to see the role that Alan Mulally has played in mm -hmm. the transformation of Ford Motor Company. Right. I'm sure there have been other key leaders that have also played a significant role. Right. But can you share with our listeners how important key leadership is, and you mentioned in your comments, key leadership in moving some of these new initiatives forward. Well, leadership is instrumental in getting everybody aligned. And what I found over my career in business, and I see it also in the uh, uh, comeback of a city like Detroit, it's all about the leadership in all aspects getting aligned and going in the same direction and having the same vision. And once you get that, the power of it is is tremendous. So, you know, in the city of Detroit, I have seen um, key leaders re relative to bringing the investment, like Dan Gilbert and, and Mike Gillage, uh, to, to the city in, in big ways, right, which has then brought more and more investment by uh, people who see it as a place that looks like it can be successful. Uh, we, we've got leadership like Larry Alexander in the Convention and Visitor Bureau, just relentless 
um, ambassador for Detroit, but putting the fundamental things in place that are very successful strategies about how you attract activities to our city and then make them very successful. And, and so there's leaders all the way around. We have our, our new mayor, of course, uh, Mike Duggan, who is just a uh, consummate you know, professional in terms of looking at um, business problems and issues, and he's bringing all that expertise to the city of Detroit. And, and so far, he's gotten off to a great start as the city has exited bankruptcy. Now, Donna, the, the city of Detroit actually had its peak population in the 1950s, yes. and then ever since then has been on a kind of a slow, right. gradual decline. Now, we've had leaders in the past. We've had mayors. We've had mm -hmm. council members. We've had people in leadership roles. Right. What's the real difference between the key leaders of today that are transforming the city versus leaders that would have been in a role in the past? I, I think what I'm seeing, and it, it you know, without without knowing all of them personally and their personal uh, attributes and leadership, what I'm seeing is the working together. So if you didn't have an approach where you were attracting investors, like Dan Gilbert as one of the big ones today, but many others, if you don't have that teamwork approach about how are we all going to win, how do we all want to get involved in, in bringing a city like Detroit back, if you can't get that alignment, it just doesn't happen. And so that has been the big difference, in my opinion, that everybody's on the same page and everybody's working to the same goal. And it's a, just a phenomenal, it's like a flywheel. Once it gets going, the momentum it, the momentum keeps it going faster and faster. And I see that happening in the city of Detroit. Now, it appears as though some of the decision-making models that are happening with the city of Detroit have also changed from some of the past models that we might have seen. The transformation of the business uh, decision-making model at Kobo, mm -hmm. uh, some of the new decision-making modeling that's happening for the city of Detroit. How important is it for key leaders in, in the transformation or the reinvention process to really make, it, make sure they have a, a new decision-making model to get different results as appears to the past? Yeah, I think it's very important, and we've had to reinvent ourselves in that way with the way we make decisions the, uh, in, in our business here in the automotive business, and I'm sure it's not just Ford Motor Company, but number one, you have to be lean and fast and very focused on what your objective is and you have to bring in the right partners and you have to give all the partners a win-win kind of solution. It's just getting alignment and, and making sure that you've got a business model that's going to work for everybody and get to, get to the results you're looking for. It is a, a reinvention because when you get into city governments in particular, there's a lot of bureaucracy and a lot of inherent barriers that I think Frankly, government officials didn't even understand were there, barriers to businesses coming in and investing. So the work has started to break those down, and as Mike Duggan has come in, he's really focused on breaking down the bureaucratic barriers to, to people being um, super excited and interested in coming in and making successful investments in the city. So we've seen... You know, there's so many assets in the city, and, and, and the restaurants, and the entertainment venues, and the cultural venues, and the sports venues, all that, as well as our gaming venues, it's all so exciting to see because, uh, like I said, the investment builds on, on itself, and one success breeds uh, a couple of more successes. So uh, the main thing is get people down there using them, and that's where I've seen a huge difference over the last few years. I want to go back and touch ba a touch on uh, what you talked about because it's really, really important, and that is this old cultural momentum pushing old um, antiquated habits forward right. as they are barriers to progress. How did the city of Detroit actually break those old cultural momentum decision-making models? Well, I may not be in the best position to understand all the inside, uh, you know, scoop on that. But from the outside, it just it just seemed like there was a final recognition that the way things were operating was not successful, and it seemed pretty obvious to most of us. But you know, I think there was just a, a, a real recognition of that, and by the population you know, of the city who had the power of their votes and the power of, of the political process to put the right leadership in place. And as you go into, uh, you know, being the largest city to go into a bankruptcy, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it's reality. 
Now, we all said, as business people, that knowing that that, that was going to be the course of action, we knew it was going to be the best thing for the city once you came out, out of it, because it, it allowed them to restructure, it allowed them to really analyze where they were, you know, where the processes were flawed. And while there's much work to do, so much of that has happened. And they're back on solid footing, and now it's just growth and, uh, and make sure that we don't go back to what you're saying, those antiquated processes that don't allow for the growth. So it's very exciting, and you know, I think it was an under, there was just a recognition that something had to change, and so the change had to happen. Right, so I'm hearing you say that it's very, very important that we, that we start to remove those old cultural momentums and right. be open to the new momentums, and I'm also hearing you say that the collaboration yes. of all these multiple entities is really what does it. It, isn't, it may be a few key leaders that are really playing a vital role in its initiation, but it really becomes everyone participating and right. everyone having an opportunity to do their part that really is developing the new cultural momentum right. that you're, you're seeing in the city of Detroit. Right. It's all about uh, one team, one dream, which is what the Convention and Visitor Bureau is talking about, and, and it really is at the heart of it. If you all view yourselves as one team with the same goal, and the dream is the vision and where we're going, uh, there's just no stopping you. And I've seen that inside Ford Motor Company. I'm very proud to be part of it, long-term employee, seeing all different phases of our of our company history. But the alignment and the and the teamwork we have today, in my opinion, is at the heart of our success. And it is the same for the city of Detroit. And it, and the convention and visitor bureau is trying to play a leadership role, where they sit in terms of getting everybody involved and aligned on that uh, one team. Donna, as a lifelong resident of the city of Detroit and, and having had a chance to watch its transformation, mm -hmm. I am sure you have been able to highlight some key attributes in downtown Detroit that as ASAE participants are coming into town, they should be particularly aware of these key things to notice and perhaps participate in. Can you yeah. not mention some of those? Yeah, I mean, Detroit is such a, a unique place, and I've been to a lot of cities just in my work capacity, and, and I love so many of our great cities in, in the country. I think Detroit is very unique. It, it, it may seem a little uh, corny, but the one thing I will tell you, and I believe this with all my heart, is you will never find friendlier people. Than in, than in the city of Detroit, who welcome visitors with open arms and with passion. And that's something I'd like people to experience and look for. As well as, uh, as I was mentioning before, just some of the great attributes. And we, we are a city on a river. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, developing, continuing to develop riverfront that offers uh, some, some, some nice aspects of uh, your time in Detroit. But there's so many venues. The culture is deep. The city history is deep. There's historic buildings. Uh, and again, very new and uh, innovative restaurants and entertainment venues. Uh, there's, there's something for everybody. And, and of course, Detroit's a big sports town. So if you're a, <laughs> if you're a sports fan, you can find anything you want in the city of Detroit that way too. But it is a very unique place because it has so many of these things all together. I think some cities are focused on certain elements, but we, in my opinion, seem to have everything. Well, and what you're really explaining is that the, one of the key reasons why the city is reinventing itself is, is the, and is the comeback city is because it has all of these multiple attractions that right. are beginning to develop, not a singular attraction. Right. And, and now I want to ask you one more question regarding the vibrancy of Detroit, because one of the trends that I've noticed is the, the number of young people Absolutely. who are beginning to be attracted to, invest in, and want to live in downtown Detroit and experience and be part of this reinvention. Right. When we look at municipalities that are growing and have a new vibrancy and, and new cultural momentum, we see those young people that are participating. Why are those young people coming back to Detroit? Well, I think it is very fascinating. And I have uh, children in that age bracket, and so I, I talk to their friends, and, and I get that same vibe. They're all just... They're all just very interesting in, interested in being part of that comeback, and they want that urban experience. Um, we have a university right downtown in the Midtown area. Uh, the, the, the campus life down there has always brought people down, but that in conjunction with the new and innovative businesses that have gone down. Uh, but, you know, Dan Gilbert has tried to incentivize his young employees to live downtown. That's been a catalyst, but that 
momentum continues even without that kind of incentive for people to want to go downtown because now there's the experiences and it's the vibe and it's the energy and it's the um, lifestyle that they can have by by uh, living downtown and it's 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 a great problem to have we've run out of residential space in these areas downtown and now the investors are seeing okay time to get into go from maybe shifting from the commercial investment to the residential and that's wonderful because I, we need to create more capacity i think the last time i heard we had a one-year wait for right. uh, residential living right. space in the downtown Into, area right and i believe that there have been some key leaders who have been instrumental in getting that new momentum started right but i don't believe that they have sustained that i think what has sustained that is the vibrancy of the of city course. and the attractiveness of all the things that you've talked right. about in multiples right. that has allowed that sustainability right. to continue. Right, and now we have even more new things coming, like the M1 rail up the Woodward Corridor, the new um, sort of sort of connecting up the downtown uh, area, You know, starting with the Rensen and downtown with the Midtown area, now will be the brand new development, including the hockey arena, but it's much more than a hockey arena, and that's going to create just a very uh, great area all the way through that is going to be very vibrant and there'll be plenty of residential and that's just going to increase you know the experience of living in that downtown and i think what you're beginning to describe is this whole new cultural momentum where whether you talk about the short-term projects that are already happening or whether you even can envision all of the more long-term projects that will happen within the uh, opportunities uh, within detroit or its metropolitan areas You can see, feel, and touch this new momentum, and it's something that the ASAE participants can really begin to experience and begin to understand. As the chairman of the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau, what kind of a message do you want to send to the ASAE participants who will be coming in August to this great city? Well, first and foremost, just a huge welcome. We are so excited and thrilled that you're going to be joining us in Detroit. I would encourage everybody, don't miss it. Don't miss the opportunity to come and experience this comeback city. It's it's going to be a super experience for you. There are so many people involved in trying to make sure that's the case. A lot of effort and passion to uh, to welcome you and to make sure that, that you are really going to see the Detroit we all know exists here and not the one that you may hear about. Uh, it, it, it would be a shame for you to miss it, and, and I really encourage you to do that, and we're just so excited and can't wait to have you come. We're speaking with Donna Inch, Chairman and CEO of Ford Land, a global leader with a global perspective. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Oh, man, see what I mean? That was just an awesome interview. She is so knowledgeable. I especially liked what she said about getting the key people in a group in a group and building on the vision. You're so right, Misty. There were so many key ideas. Then. And building that mission, I just think, is incredibly important in the first step of getting people really aligned with where you're trying to go. I think people get dissatisfied with things, but they don't always know what to do about that dissatisfaction. So what Donna really suggested was, you have to rally people around that key vision and let that key vision be what propels you to that very next step. Right, and it's all about aligning the leadership, which I know that Detroit has worked really hard on, and they've been fairly transparent about that, which has helped bring everybody else, outside stakeholders, in on the process. And as Donna had suggested, when you have that alignment of that vision with your key leaders, there's a whole nother level of of energy that begins to take place. I think for a lot of companies and a lot of associations, a lot of municipalities, uh, you know, whatever the entity is, when you have a misalignment, if you have old processes or if you have old systems where people just can't get excited about them, you're missing a very vital part of of what Donna described in the reinvention process, which is that key vision and getting people excited about what's coming new, not kind of apathetic towards the old processes and the old ways of doing things. That's the buy-in. That's the ownership we talk about in the peer reinvention process, and it's it's getting people to create the the vision themselves and see where they really are a key piece of implementing and executing the making it a reality i've got to be honest with you misty one of the real parallels i saw in the in the growth of detroit in down the downtown area with the growth of the 30 somethings and the amount of living space that's not available because they've used it all up is how that parallels to new membership opportunities for associations that if you find a way to build that momentum and that new energy and make it the the place to be as they've made downtown detroit the the place to be why can't that very same set of scenarios 
B, how associations build new membership, that they are able to create a vision, they're able to create new energy, they'll be able to create new attractions. Why is not that associations can't take advantage of that very same set of circumstances? I couldn't agree more. In a podcast we heard um, a few weeks ago now with uh, Michael Callahan, he talked about how associations need to be looking for what's next and, and they move from just surviving to thriving. And I think that's one of the things that you do to thrive is find those new pockets of membership, that emerging thing, and create that space for them to come and grow. Donna really did outline the fact that the barriers that exist in why we don't have those things happen is simply barriers in our own mind. We've created the processes, we've created the set of circumstances that exist today, yet we also have the power to remove those barriers. And it's the key leaders that really have to be the visionaries that establishes the new vision, the new alignments, the new energies, to overcome and show how to remove those old barriers. Yes, yeah, so many times in my history with associations, which is more than a decade, is the barriers that exist are, aren't are really real. Once you start looking at them and picking away at them, it's like, oh, why did we think that this was insurmountable? Because it's not at all. Misty, the barriers exist whether you're at the county level in a municipality, whether you're at the city level, whether you're at the association or large a for-profit level, how we have done business in the past is like, likely not going to be how we do business in the future. And when we see entities that are struggling in any of those categories, we tend to find those entities which are holding on to the old processes too long. In the city of Detroit, everyone knew that it was way past time to make a change. Mm -hmm. I think also, though, and I'm not discounting anything that we said, and I don't want to sound like a hypocrite here, but Donna also mentioned that Detroit has a deep history. And I think Detroit is finding that beautiful balance of acknowledging their history, celebrating their history, but also reinventing to something new. As evidenced by that rich history, Misty, not a lot of people realize that the city of Detroit has some of the most amazing architecture in the entire United States. Now, if you just focused on what was wrong about Detroit, there'd be no reason to come. But if you focus on the things that are right, the real opportunities to create new, attractive reasons to belong, that significant architecture that takes place in the city of Detroit, or the Detroit Institute of Arts, with its one of the most magnificent art collections in the entire world, become where the focal points need to be, not necessarily where news today is choosing to place their uh, emphasis. And Donna talks about how excited people get when the new emphasis, uh, when the energy that it surrounds that new emphasis is really the priority. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really excited for the participants of the ASAE 2015 mm -hmm. annual meeting to come and, like Donna said, see Detroit, actually see it, experience it, go to some of those places you were just mentioning, and, and stop just reading headlines and thinking they know what the city is about. I think once people begin to see that the reinvention of Detroit is real, that there's a parallel within their own association, within their own life, within their, all of the organizations that they participate in, that key leaders can understand that there's a vision that surrounds that next step. Detroit is living it, Detroit is behaving it, and Detroit is the place to be. If you're ready for a change, make it a change that lasts. Make it pure reinvention. Thanks for listening to this episode of Pure Reinvention. Keep the conversation going and get alerts when new podcasts are up by following us on Twitter at Pure Reinvention or sign up for our mailing list at pureinvention.com.